Here's how I use my iPad for embroidery. First, I open my embroidery software on my Mac. I have Embrilliant Stitch Artist Level 1. Then if you have the latest Mac OS, you should be able to use the mirror function. Find and select your iPad, and then you'll be able to see your entire desktop on your iPad. Keep in mind, you won't be able to use it as a touch screen, so you will need an external mouse, or this is where an Apple Pencil comes in handy. You can use it as your mouse and as your drawing tool. For the time being, this is definitely going to replace my trackpad and external mouse. To start, it's easier on my hand, and I find it faster to adjust vector points. Overall, I'm definitely going to be using Embrilliance on my iPad a lot, but I do want to say the mirror function is not yet perfect. There is no lag on the application, but it does tend to freeze every now and then. But I turn the mirror function off and then back on, and I continue where I left off. Here's an example of how I use my embroidery software to create stitch designs for my embroidery machine. I have a software called Embrilliant Stitch Artist, and what I did here was import an image from my desktop. This image I got off Google. My kids love this character. His name is Pete the Cat, and I've been wanting to make these little felt toys for them based on the character and the books. What I'm doing now is basically tracing over the image using the feature called Draw With Points. It's much easier to use my Apple Pencil versus my mouse for this particular part. What I'm also doing is splitting this image into sections. I started off with the head, and now as you can see I'm working on the body. And next I'll be doing the eyes and the nose. I really like this software because you can really get into the details. One thing you can do to save time is to try and do the sections in the order that you want them to be stitched out. It saves a little bit of time, but you can always rearrange later. I'm not too worried about this particular design because it's very simple. As you can see, I'm also not worried about filling them in with stitches right now. I'll do that later. I've been getting a lot of requests to share more of this type of content, so I hope this helps and I'll do my best to share more. I have Stitch Artist Level 1, but there are so many features, features that I haven't even yet tapped into because there's a lot. So if you're a beginner like me, Stitch Artist Level 1 is perfect and more than enough. Later on, you can decide if you want to upgrade to a Level 2 or 3. They offer a discounted price, so keep that in mind. Here I go again using the Draw With Points tool to help me get the eyes. One cool tip right here is that you can copy and paste objects. So for example, I did one eyeball. I copied and pasted that for the second one so I didn't have to draw it again. It's super handy. I just needed to invert it just to make it perfect. After I finished drawing with points, I moved over to my MacBook to now focus on the stitching. This is going to be an applique design. So here's the fabric that I'll be using. Because it's an applique design, I won't be filling this in with stitches. The fabric is going to be what's filling it in. So I'm just working on a satin stitch outline. And here's the fabric I'll be using for the eyes. So as you can see, now all those sections that I worked on earlier, I can modify them to turn into whatever stitch type I want. Whether that be a satin stitch outline or maybe fill it in with um, stitches, I can do that. Using the stitch display now, I, I can also modify any areas that need a little bit of cleanup. Also, with every stitch type that's offered, another thing is you can also modify the different stitch types that are offered. For example, I can modify the density of a fill stitch or the thickness of a satin border stitch. The possibilities are a lot and I really like that about this program. As an example here for the whiskers, I used a very thin satin stitch, but I also modified the end points. So I wanted the end points to look rounded versus blocky. I know it's kind of hard to tell from here, but if I were to zoom in, you can see how rounded they are. So now I am adding the final touches here, looking through the order and are rearranging some of it. I noticed the tail looked a little off, so I modified it again. I also modified the thickness just a little bit more. The last thing I did was run a simulation stitch so I could see how it would play on my embroidery machine. Everything looked good, so I went ahead and saved that into a PES file for my brother PE800. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching.